Namaste. My name is Todd Norian and I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga. Welcome to Asana Spotlight. And I'll ask you to share this video with anyone you know who has knee pain. We're going to focus on knees today. Who doesn't have knee pain? Uh, the knees are so uh, such an important joint and you know when you have a sore knee um, it affects your whole day. You know, you can get very grumpy, at least I do. And uh, it affects us as we walk, even when we're sitting sometimes, and certainly in the practice of yoga, any other kind of exercise sport can be uh, a problem for the knees. So we're going to take a look at what sort of makes the knee work um, and, and how to heal it. And the main formula we're going to focus on in the Ashaya method is called shins in, thighs wide. That is the key to um, rejuvenating the knees. I've had many knee injuries in the past from yoga and from sports, and uh, even had a torn meniscus that I healed with shins in, thighs wide. There are a lot of other therapies that are really, really good to do, including icing it, and if you can take ibuprofen, or some anti-inflammatory, all that helps. In fact, I'm recovering from a knee injury now. Um, it's an overuse injury. But sometimes the injury um, is not necessarily a tear in the cartilage, um, but it could be inflammation in one of the bursas. There's so many different sort of cushions near the knee um, to, to help us that when those bursas get inflamed, uh, it can mimic a torn uh, cartilage or torn meniscus issues. So, um, you know, I always say like do the natural method first for the first few months or even up to six months and still if you have no relief, go get it checked out. Get an MRI. Use medical science. Um, that's what I always do. So the knee joint, although it's a very important joint, it's known as a dumb joint or actually a simple joint because it's a hinge joint. And hinge joints do not like to turn or twist. They don't like to be jammed and they don't like to be pounded. Um, and the knee takes on the karma from what's above and what's below it. So um, you could have knee pain because you have poor arches in your feet or foot alignment or um, in the hips and pelvis. Actually, I think most of the issues of the knees first starts in the hips and pelvis. Um, so that's kind of it on the physical level. Now there's a body-mind component that is also very interesting. I do believe in body-mind connections, but um, you know you have to be reflective and meditative. And certainly we want to give these body-mind ideas um, without self-judgment. So you have to keep a very open mind. Otherwise, what I'm about to say, you might take the wrong way and and then your knee's gonna hurt even more. So the knees represents our needs, our kids' needs, meaning like the needs that each individual has. And if you're really busy taking care of other people all the time, we can skip over our own needs. And basically the knee is telling us that we are important and that we do need to nourish ourselves. And sometimes nourish ourselves first so we feel good and have energy to give to other people. And how many times do we exhaust ourselves either helping others or overworking or overdoing anything? And that can lead to a feeling of, of being maybe stubborn, maybe rigid in our beliefs and all that. That's all can be. This is the body-mind connection related to the knees. So I like to think of this idea as the body is constantly giving us signals how to better care for ourselves and how to stay in balance. Basically, how to stay happy. And when you have pain in the body, it's a signal, it's a message. Hey, something's out of alignment. Your life does need to change. Some habit or some, you know, thing that's going on in your life that you need to look at and address. So we're going to look at how to nourish ourselves through shins and thighs wide so that we can be more radiant in life and, and shine our light and actually give to others, which is such a beautiful experience when we're not depleting ourselves and harming ourselves by helping others. It's kind of a martyrdom, uh, martyrdom attitude in there somewhere. Um, so we're going to soften the perfectionism, soften rigidity, soften stubbornness, and learn how to go with the flow a little bit better. Okay?
Sound good? So if you know of anyone who should go with the flow a little bit more or who is having knee pains, please share this uh, video with them. And that way we spread more light, more love, more healing, and then there's less grumpy people in the world. And that's a good thing. All right. Um, you are going to need a couple of props for this class. You'll need a chair or, um, you know, a low table, something you can put your foot up on, um, and a block and a belt that has a class. Okay, so let's first uh, come up to standing, and I'll meet you there in just a second as I clear my space. All right, so you're standing, hands on your hips, bring your feet parallel, and just look down and see where your feet are. So we can do it like this. I'd like you to just march in place. And just like you're walking down the street, beautiful day. And then just exhale and stop, freeze, and then look down at your feet. See which foot is turned out more. Almost always the foot that's turned out is the foot where you have a knee issue. And you can just sort of check. Maybe your, your knees are turned out or your knees are turned in. So this is sort of like our common stance. Um, I landed actually pretty well today, but typically I have one foot that's out like that. And that's usually the knee that gives me a problem. So, and why does the leg turn out? Uh, just from an imbalance of the muscles in the legs. So that's what yoga is great for is we can rebalance what's going on there. So bring your feet parallel, absolutely parallel. The second toe front ankle lines are parallel. Then lift and spread your toes. Now, when you lift, soften your knees a bit. One of the problems with knee pain is if you're loose in the joints, you will hyperextend. I, I can't really, as much as I try, sorry, I have very stable joints. I can't hyperextend, but you can kind of see that when the hyperextension means that the top of the shin goes back faster than the back of the shin and the knee bends backwards. It's one of the positions knees really don't do well with. They don't do well with twists or bending in the reverse direction. So if you micro bend your knees like this, it's just a tiny bit of a bend, then that takes the hyperextension out. Then move your thigh bones back, draw your tailbone in. Now grab yourself a block and put the block the short side facing the front, right up in the upper inner thighs. And again, feet parallel and then just squeeze the block. Now that should feel really good because it is stabilizing the muscles in the legs and also that uh, are around the knees. So hug the blocks, lift the toes. Hug your shins more to the middle. When your toes go up, your shins hug in. You can see these little lines. You can look at, at your leg. When I lift, these are called the racing stripes or the uh, peroneal muscles. And usually those are pretty weak as are the inner thighs. So shins and thighs wide strengthens what's weak and the outer shins usually and the inner thighs. So when you lift your toes, you'll, your arches will come up. Flat feet is another issue for um, sore knees. So lift your toes, the arches come up the shins hug, and then move the block back with your thighs, just stick your butt back. And then keeping your thighs back, pull your tailbone in. And try to do that without jamming your thighs forward again. So it's thighs back, tailbone in. Now the shins hug, but the thighs expand out. Now I'll show you that in more detail. And then just inhale, stretch your arms up. Try to create a very straight plumb line down the side. So you have your, you know, your whole head, like the ear is in line with the shoulder, with the hip, with the ankle. Just like this. Okay, inhale, bring your arms up, and then exhale, sweep them down. All right, remove the block, keep it handy, we're gonna use it again. And then exhale, full at the hips, and touch the floor, come back into downward dog pose, and just start to stretch your heels alternately toward the floor. Take some deep breaths. Do a, a pedaling motion here. And what we want to do is reach through the heel to get the 
back of the calf to stretch, but also the Achilles tendon. So the calf and the Achilles tendon, um, the calf is, is made up uh, primarily of the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles, and those get very, very tight. If you're a walker or if you run, or even biking will, will tighten them. Remember when I said knee is a dumb joint, it reacts to everything above or below it? Well, it reacts to very tight calves and tight quadriceps. Now we're gonna change the angle. So uh, bend your left knee, stretch your right leg, and turn your right foot out and try to bring the outer edge of your right heel to the floor. Stretch, now we're gonna hold, breathe. Good, push the outer heel down and then switch. Turn, uh, bend your right knee, turn your left foot out just a bit and then try to get the outer heel more toward the floor. Hold and breathe. Excellent, then walk step by step in. Push through your feet, sweep your arms out to the side, come all the way up and exhale, release. Another great stretch is to get the outer edge of the uh, thighs to stretch, the iliotibial band. So the ilium is the, the pelvis and the tibia is the shin bone. So it's a tight band of connective tissue that runs along the side and it kind of shrink wraps your legs. But it crosses the knee and oftentimes when that ITB uh, band is too tight, it has an effect on the knee. So here's a great ITB stretch. Okay, so cross your uh, right ankle in front of the left. Careful of your balance here. You can get a chair or a wall to hang on to. Okay, make your feet parallel, hands to hips, hug your legs toward the middle, and then fold. Yeah, this is a polite forward bend. Look how polite this is. Okay, and then you come down. Now, if you can't touch the floor, you can grab a block, put your hands up on a block so you don't have to go so far. Good, now breathe. Take your thigh bones back more. First, interrotate your thighs. Yep, take your uh, left thigh back more. Then take the uh, outer right hip crease back. Excellent. Now, walk your hands over to the right. So you twist, this way. So twisting away from the front leg, the leg that's in front. And breathe. Come back to center, root through your feet. Do hands to hips, then shoulders back, and come up gradually. Good. Switch. Cross and fold. Easy does it. Come down, hands on the floor or on a block. Lift your toes. Hug your legs toward the middle. Yep, now take your thigh bones back. You should get a little more stretch on the leg that's uh, behind. Good. And then walk your hands out to the left, over to the left, to bring a twist into it. And breathe. So this is IT band. It's also calf stretch. Inhale back to center, root the feet, hands to hips, shoulders back, and uncross. Okay, just bend your knees here. See how they feel. So far, so good? All right, the next one is you take a roll, blanket like this, uh, unfold it once, and on the folded, the smooth end, you're gonna make a roll and you can probably just roll the whole thing up. It shouldn't be too big, but if that feels like it's too wide for you, then you can unroll it a little bit. Okay, put it perpendicular to your mat, and then uh, hands on the, on the roll, 
you're going to come up halfway up on the roll with your feet and then feet parallel spread your toes heels are on the floor now this will kind of jam you into knee hyperextension so bend your knees just a tiny bit spread your toes Awesome. Okay, now take your thigh bones back. Root the very base of your shins back. Base of the shins go back. Breathe. Keep your tongue inside your mouth. I know this is an intense stretch, but it is really, really good for the calves. Bend your knees a little more. Take your thighs back more. And you should feel it in hamstrings, hips, calves, Achilles tendon, Okay, two more breaths. Step back, a couple of inches, come off the roll, root your feet down, and come up. All right, that's a great one. Another interesting adjustment we're gonna do is called the talus bone adjustment. You're gonna need a chair. And the talus is one of the metatarsals. So the foot, you know, the shin has two bones in it, fibula and tibia, and they come down, and those two bones rest on top of one of the, ta of the um, tarsal bones. It's called the talus. Okay. And that can sometimes move forward a little bit, and we need to have that back. So my instruction when I say take the base of your shin back that's kind of a reference to the talus bone. Step one foot up on the chair and lunge. And you want to put your thumbs right at the base of the ankle. It's a little painful in there. There's soft tissue there. And you put your, your thumbs in there. Let me see if I can just maneuver this and give you a better, a better picture of like where exactly. This is, okay, this is as close as I can get. You guys see right here? Boom. And here's the action. I'm going to push in medium pressure, and then I bend the knee this way, and then release. So you bend and release. And I've got pressure. My thumbs are just really pushing in there. And it's a little painful, and really the key here is take as much pain as you can tolerate. It's not going to hurt you. And just go back and forth and breathe. And keep your pressure steady the whole time. I'm not releasing my pressure. And of course you wanna make, uh, make sure your knee is in alignment over toe two and three. Center of the knee in alignment with two and three. Toe two and three. Okay. Oh. Okay, and switch. You have to bend the knee a little bit and right at the base of the tibia here, just a little bit lower, there's soft tissue. And you, you start to understand, you'll, you'll get used to how it's supposed to feel. There's a particular kind of talus pain that you'll feel. Okay, and once you've got that, Steady pressure and just bend. And we can go back and forth quite a lot. And maybe it's not painful for you. That could mean your talus bone is in good place. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's just uh, consider that's the warm up. And the next one is really the sort of the key technique shins in, thighs wide. So to approximate and support shins in. We're gonna hug in with self-nourishment using the belt. So get a belt, make the loop, step inside the loop, 
and put the belt on the upper, the, the widest part of the shin, wherever it bows the most. For most people, it's about halfway or three quarters of the way up. But we're not gonna, we're gonna keep it loose. Actually widen your feet so you don't lose the belt. And put the block right up in between your thighs. So we want belt around shins and the block here. Once you have your block in place, then position your belt, feet, adjust your feet so the feet stay hip distance apart. That's really important. And then pull the belt uncomfortably tight. Ready? Uncomfortable. Come on, you can do it. All right, now you stand. Oh my goodness, lift your toes, spread your toes, especially the fifth toe and then hug in with the belt with self-nourishment. Take care of your needs. And the block will help you push your thigh bones apart. So you turn your thighs in, move them back, draw your tailbone in, and then widen your thighs apart. So shins come in this way toward the midline, thighs push out toward the midline, and they kind of turn in and go back a little, and then they expand. Awesome. And breathe. So, this is the main shape. Shins in, thighs wide. Hug in with self-nourishment so that you can radiate light out. Okay, so now, carefully, I'll show you from the side. Okay, there's a lot of different things we can do in this position, but I'm just, we're going to do two of them. So hands to hips. Now, we're going to do a quarter squat. If you have knee pain right now, stop. Don't go that far. I can go to about here. Actually, my knee is not hurting so much today. Um, so you do a quarter squat and then straighten. Quarter squat and straighten. But here's what I want you to notice is make sure when you quarter squat, your knees do not cave in like this. Do you guys see? Here's their cave. Here, they stay wide. It's subtle, okay? All right, so the knees go with the thighs. So your shins hug in, but your knees and thighs go apart. So when you quarter squat, do not let your knees get closer together. You gotta push your knees apart. Yeah, and you'll feel pressure on the belt. Push your knees apart. Good. And when you squat, stick your butt back behind you so you keep a low back curve rather than like this. You know, I wouldn't want you to do it like this, okay? So the butt goes back, and they're just quarter squats. Okay, we're not done yet. And your shin should be really tired about now. Okay, lift and spread your toes. That's why I told you the peroneus muscles are the weakest muscles in the legs. Okay, so now pull up from your feet to the pelvis, like you could pull up the nourishment from the earth. Pull up feet to pelvis, just energetically. Maintain that as you do the quarter squat. Your, your hips go down, but you're gonna pull up, widen your knees. And then from your pelvis, root your feet into the earth as you go up. Pull up as you go down. Pull up. Push down as you go up. Confused? Okay, I hope not. Do a few more. You'll, you'll start to feel this in the glutes as well, which is really, really good. We have to turn our glutes on. Oftentimes the knee pain comes where you have very weak uh, gluteal muscles, gluteus medius usually. It's our walking muscle. Okay, lift and spread your toes. Make your knees go wide. One more. Excellent. Okay, so now, um, Typically, I would say, okay, remove all this and walk around and feel it. But this is a concentrated little therapeutic session. So I'm going to give you the last one, which is you maintain block and belt. 
but you'll need to sit down and get close to the very edge of your mat. Uh, I think I can go over here. All right, so sit down. <laughs> it's not so easy. We've all experienced it. Who took the toilet paper? Okay, now uh, come to the edge of your mat this way so that your um, heels can glide. And if you're, you're going to want to glide like this. If you don't have enough glide, then put a washcloth or a scarf or something underneath your heels. I can see mine. They don't, I can glide in, but I can't push out. So you could do it in socks too. But I'm going to put this shawl, just a thin layer of the shawl, under my heels. So that's going to give me the slippery surface I need. Okay, so start up like this. Lean back on your hands. And take a look at your feet. Bring your feet into Tadasana position. Spread your toes. Knees wide. And then see if you can keep your knees wide as you stretch your legs straight. Look at your feet. Don't change the shape of Tadasana in your feet. And then slowly... As you watch your feet, ankles, shins, knees, drag your heels in toward you, slide them, but don't let your knees cave in. All right, so you have to work very hard to push your knees apart, spread your fifth toes. So these are called sliders. Hug in to nourish yourself take care of your own needs. In a way, this is the affirmation. You are important. You matter. And that you are worthy to be cared for by you. You know, it's, it's not um, shameful to care for yourself. You're not guilty because you're caring for yourself first. We really have quite a hang up normally around just being so selfish. I'm like, hey, you're not being selfish enough. How to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. That's nice. Okay, one more. Okay, now remove the block, step out of the belt. And come up to standing. I just want you to walk a little bit. Okay, so hopefully your knees feel a little bit more open. My prescription would be do this twice a day for five or ten minutes. Uh, continue that for as long as you need to until the knee pain goes away. And I think it's really important not to overstrain the knee. So you have to avoid, like if you can't do child's pose, if you can't bend the knee, um, if it hurts when you walk, you just have to limit your activity for a little while until you can get that inflammation out of there. And then the knee will, will gradually uh, find its way back to alignment if you're doing these exercises and really taking care of what's above, what's below, and also taking care of your own needs, okay? You deserve it, and you are worthy of it. Bring your palms in front. Thank you so much for spending this time. If you wanna learn more, I have a, uh, it's called Introduction to Ashaya Yoga Therapy, and it's on my website. It's just a little manual. You can download it, or you can uh, order it, and we'll ship it to you. All right, that's at ashayayoga.com. Thank you so much. Close your eyes for a moment from deep inside the core of the body, core of the heart. Nourish yourself with the spirit and let's let that spirit radiate out to nourish everyone else that we come into contact with today. We'll take a breath and share in the sound of Aum. Oh. 
Namaste. Happy knees. Thank you.